Hey guys, in this video, you're gonna see not me, but a real customer of ours make socks. His name is Julian Nunez, the owner of DigiWorks, and we're gonna go inside his house in his workstation, and he's gonna show us his own home base printer, heat press, and work table, and show you how he's making silky socks. So I thought this would be valuable for you guys who are working from home because you don't have to have a big old factory and warehouse and setup. You can do silky socks custom made for your clients right from home. So hope you find this video valuable and we're gonna let Julian get right to it. Enjoy. Hey, what's up Silky fam? My name is Julian and I'm the owner and operator of DigiWorks. As a customer of Silky Socks, I've been lucky enough to have been chosen by Mr. Silky himself to provide the Silky Sharks community a quick tutorial on how I run through one of my biggest sellers. I'm going to be going through on how I design, print, and press the athletic socks with the black bottom. A big seller of mine, super excited to get through this video with you, so stay tuned and check it out. Now first thing we got to do is design our socks. So I just recently found out about a great resource through the Silky Socks Sublimation Facebook group. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use one of their provided templates so that way we can go ahead and put that and print it on some of these athletic socks. Come on, come with me to my workstation. Let's check it out. All right, Silky fam. Welcome to my computer workstation where I do my design and most of my business uh, you know, workflow. So here I've got the Facebook a uh, sublimation with silky soups group up because Raquel had posted a link to the Google Drive that provides any silky socks customer access to their templates that they've used. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Silky himself, Dinesh, went on there and said that he sold tons of socks to sports groups and youth athletics uh, using these templates here. So I'm gonna go into the jersey socks and I really liked this uh, black and red theme here. And the good thing about these templates is that they provided us not only a PDF file, but also a Photoshop file. So if you're designing with Adobe Photoshop, it's already done for you. Layers are there, so you can go ahead and edit them as you wish to customize your own number, your own name of the team, and you can even go ahead and customize your own logo there. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this which I have actually already have, but we're gonna just do a quick download so I can show you. So I just simply download it, and right there, there we go. So I'm gonna open it, and it opens up our Silky Socks file, okay? So it opens up with a pre-made template on there. You can go ahead and start customizing it and stretching it out however you need it to fit your socks, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the template that I have already pre-made, I actually measured the silky jigs that I bought directly from Silky Socks. And when I measured them, they come out to be about four inches and a quarter wide by about seven and a half from where the uh, jig starts to bend. Now that's how I load them and I'll run through on how exactly I load my socks with you here in just a moment. So for the design, what I did is I made a rectangle here, as you can see, and I made it at five inches wide by eight inches tall. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me some overlap when I place my transfer on my sock that I get full coverage on the ankle portion of the sock, right? That's the only portion that we need to sublimate since we're doing the athletic socks with the black bottom. Okay, there we go. And we'll load that here in just a bit. Now, as I have my template here at measured at a five by eight, what I do is I just reduce the opacity so that way I can see exactly what I'm designing behind there and make sure that it does line up with my template. Now I'm printing on a just standard uh, sheet of paper. So it's eight and a half by 11. And I'm going to be showing you what I print on right now in just a moment as well. And I use Sawgrass and Sawgrass Print Manager to print my transfers. Okay. Now, once I have everything here, 
centered the way I want it on my templates. I just hide my templates to bring back the original image. And everything looks good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and print the Silky Socks number 86 custom uh, socks here. So let me get this print. As I said, I send it through my Sawgrass Print Manager. Nope, we're gonna be printing in landscape. And as soon as I hit print, it's gonna go ahead and bring up my print manager software. I double check that I'm on polyester fabric. Everything looks good as far as my layout. I'm only gonna be doing a pair of socks. So I'm gonna need two of these. Color, I'm gonna select vivid as my color and I'm ready to print. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to my printer so we can see these transfers getting done. All right, Silky fam, here we are at the printer, printing the last transfer. I'm using a Sawgrass SG800. I've had this printer now for about the last uh, two and a half years or so. Never had an issue. All I do is uh, leave it plugged in, keep the ink stocked up, make sure I do a head cleaning every now and then, and it's been printing me some beautiful transfers. So let's go ahead and get these placed onto our socks. All right, Silky fam, we're back over here to the other workstation where we do the cutting, the transfer prep, and the heat pressing. Now I've got the camera focused in on my work table here so that way I can show you on how I load the jig with the athletic sock with no problem, okay? So I've got my jigs here and you know, just a, a quick tip, I always recommend just getting a few sets of jigs of the same kind, especially if you're printing more than just one order, you can preload jigs and have the socks ready to go. It just makes it a lot easier and a lot faster, efficient to work. Okay, but let me get you the jig here and show you real quick on how I load the jig. So, I just get the jig here. As I'm a little higher than the camera, but let me get down a little bit. I just tuck my chin, just like that as you can see. I get my sock, I roll it up, okay? And then bring it in over, put it down, and then just continue bringing it up right there. Now, I leave roughly about a half an inch, but once you start printing, you'll get the ink line and you'll know when to stop. And then I spread the sock over the jig, just like so, okay? Now you wanna get the jig to cover all the way down to where the bend of the jig, I'm sorry, the sock. You want the sock to be on the jig all the way down to where the bend of the jig is. That's where I put the beginning of the colored foot. Okay. Now I like having my lines nice and straight because I'm just like that. Okay. When I see a jig that's loaded like this, it makes me kind of cringe sometimes. But each person has their own preference, right? I like mine nice and straight. So that way when I do the flip and roll technique, it just makes it so much easier and so much cleaner. Okay, so there's my sock loaded onto my jig, ready to go. Now I like doing prints that have the uh, left and right logos that are on the sock. Some like doing it to where it is front and back instead, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do both today. We're gonna do a left and right, and then we're also gonna do a front and back, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same method. Get down here so you can see me. Tuck it into my chin. Roll it up just a bit here. And then I slide it on. Right there, there we go. Get the lines, the, the ridges here of the sock 
nice and straight. And there we go. Now we have a loaded front and back sock with the heel. I get the heel and then I tuck it in. Tuck that heel in right there. So now we got a loaded front and back print. And then we have a loaded left and right. As you can see the heel sticking out right here. So left and right, okay? Now let's get over to our heat press so we can get these socks uh, sublimated. All right, everybody, welcome back to the heat press. Today I'm working on a Stahl's Hottronics Fusion IQ. It's a 16 by 20 heat press with a swing out and also the drawer option. Great heat press, uh, works wonders for me. Now, I've already preheated my press to 390 and I sublimate at a medium pressure, so I'm gonna double check my pressure. Now for my heat press specifically, medium pressure for me is roughly about a four to five, okay? Now I've got my heat transfers right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fold them in half. And I'm gonna slice right down the middle. Now as you remember on the computer, I had already had a template set up, so everything was already designed for me, so that way when I lay my transfer down, it's gonna print just perfectly. Now we're gonna go ahead and knock two socks out at the same time as I always do. And remember, we're gonna be doing a left and right print, and then we're also gonna be doing a front and back print, just so you guys can see the difference on how they look. So I lay it down on top of a piece of um, 11 by 17 printer paper that I've had left over for the longest time. I've had a, literally thousands of these sheets and they've just been running through them and they, I use them as my blowout sheets uh, for printing. I also have a roll of butcher paper that I use um, but I haven't had to touch that yet because I've had so many of these uh, left over. Now, I've got my transfers here, already prepped and cut. So we're gonna go ahead and just lay them down. Now what I recommend is whatever the top of your design is, I want you to put that, you know, well, not that I want you to, but I would recommend that you have it on the same spot every time. Now what I like doing is the very top portion of this sock right here, you see where it has this border. I start right below that. So I'm gonna put my Silky Socks logo centered just right below that, okay? Take a look right there, right below that. I get the print that comes all the way down to the bottom of the sock, so we're good. We get full coverage using uh, a five by eight template, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing. Look for that border center my design right below it and it looks like we're good you're going to go ahead and cover this with a, another piece of paper and we're going to be pressing at 390 degrees for 45 seconds at a medium pressure now while this is getting set up here like i said we can always be working ahead of time, right? So I have these extra jigs that I'm gonna go ahead and prep and insert these socks so we can get the other set going, okay? So remember I did my little chin thing here. All right, so I got to let this cool down just a little bit. Okay, now let's check out these prints. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. And check that out, right? That's the left to right. This is the front and back. So now we're going to do the roll and flip technique. 
So basically, if you take a look here, if you do not roll it, you're gonna be left with this bit of a line here that's right on the border. Now, if you've seen plenty of videos that uh, Mr. Silky himself has put out, a lot of uh, um, people have commented and also posting their work on the Facebook group and you can tell where they actually do a little bit of roll, right? So let's just do a little bit of roll. I don't like to do a whole lot of roll, just a little bit. Just like that. Do the same thing over here. Just enough to get that white border out the way so we can print right over it. The less of overlap of ink you have, the less of a line that you will have as well. Sometimes you can get it so well that it looks just completely seamless. It does take practice, so I suggest you guys go out there and start printing. Okay, so there's my roll technique. And we're gonna place this back to get printed on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and roll the other one. Like I said, I don't like a whole lot of roll. I don't want a whole lot of that line being shown through. That's good for me. I do the same thing over here. Now, when I'm in when I'm in production mode, this is going by a lot faster, right? Because I'm just moving and grooving. Right now, I just want to show y'all exactly how much I get over. Okay. So right there, right there. Okay, so let's place this down. I use the same sheet right here at the, that I use for the first press. As a matter of fact, I use this sheet probably until it starts turning real brown over here and kind of crumbly. I already have an outline of where I need to know to put my socks. So that serves as a guide for me. I don't place the whole sock onto the press. I just leave the bottom foot portion hanging off as you've seen the first time I did. I'm gonna get my other set of transfers and we're gonna place them on. Same technique, that top border, I'm gonna place the logo right below it where it has the name Silky Socks and center it right on the sock. Same thing with the front and back style sock. I'm gonna place it right below that border of the sock. Center the logo, there we go. I'm gonna place my cover sheet right on top. I reuse the same cover sheet. Again, like I said, if I'm doing multiple socks of the same style, then I'm gonna reuse the same cover sheet. If I'm doing a new style, I'll actually go ahead and replace my, my uh, cover sheets. We're gonna press at 390 degrees for 45 seconds. Let me go ahead and lock down my wheels on my uh, press stand. I'll start to roll around there, did you see? Now, while that one's pressing, we're gonna go ahead and load the other one. So right here, tuck it in. We're gonna do a front and back. So I prepped it by rolling it up front and back. Oh, excuse me, dropped it. Okay, and there we go, a printed set of silky socks. Now keep in mind, this was done front and back, and this was done side to side. Now I'm gonna let them cool down for just a second. I'm gonna remove them from the jig and I'm gonna place them on my mannequin so we can see what they look like. All right, Silky fam, just got done with heat pressing the socks, got them off those hot jigs and loaded onto my mannequin legs. I want you to 
take a look and see the difference between the front and back print and the side to side print. So this is the front and back print. Now you notice the seam would be here on the side, a bit of a seam, but hardly noticeable. And then we have the side to side print. Take a look at that. This template was provided by Sublimation with Silky Socks Facebook group. Ms. Raquel had posted a link to a Google Drive. You can also find the templates on the website and that's what I use today. Super simple, easy to use, easy to edit, and it's free to all Silky customers. All right, Silky fam, that does it for now. Sublimating with DigiWorks. Silky Socks Athletic Socks. I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, that you like, and that you comment if you have any questions at all, or let us know what you also want to see. I'll be coming by and answering any questions. And you can also catch me on the Facebook Sublimation Group. If you're not part of that group, make sure you join. Lots of good information, lots of good vibes, lots of motivation, amazing place to be to grow your business with silky socks. Thank you, and you guys have a good one.